become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I continue with the series exploring the ancient history of physical culture with a look at physical culture in ancient China. Today's video features my recent interview with Professor Connor Heffernan from the Stark Center in Austin, Texas, and continues where we left off. Uh, we previously discussed just how old physical culture likely was and how the practice of physical culture in ancient, in ancient times was so deeply rooted in the military practice. And this is most obvious in physical culture practices of ancient China, which is today's topic. In particular, martial arts played a major role in the development of physical culture and in the Iron Game, as we see it today. Indeed, the practices in ancient China, uh, which went beyond uh, the, the mere lifting of rocks. I mean, we see the lifting of odd objects uh, and the lifting, the wielding, and even swinging of heavy weapons, reminiscent of later practices of strongmen uh, of the 1800s, as an example, who would later be swinging and juggling heavy weights and barbells. So I really hope that you enjoy this interview. From, from my own studies and having studied as well martial arts for a very long time, because mm. I actually did that uh, since probably 17, 18 years of age, um, I've, I've learned that uh, through, through the old texts of martial arts that within martial arts being primarily, as we already discussed, uh, taught to soldiers back then, especially to strengthen certain armies and cer certain groups of, of nations within, for example, Asia, in particular China, um, with martial arts training, which can be uh, traced back to back to even 6000 BC, um, there was uh, the practice, for example, of lifting stones, lifting um, as uh, you, talking on stones now, since you mentioned it, and lifting um, irregular objects. One of the objects was was a, a cauldron um, that that was also again tied into religion, um, and um, I think it was called a, a ding. Um, yes, right. Yes. Have you heard about this? Or do you know yeah, much so about this? A, a little bit. I know there's a wonderful book written by, I'm just trying to pull up his name now. Um, yes, Nigel Crowther called Sport in Ancient Times. Um, Thank you. So it was published in 2007. But he right. kind of gives a play by play of these ancient cultures. And he has something on ancient Chinese physical culture where, as you say, they're lifting stones and they're lifting uh, dings. And the ding is like a cauldron with uh, three legs Correct. and it could either be lifted by one person or two people mm -hmm. and like they're immensely large and heavy objects and the, as you say they hold this very important uh, religious um, important sorry, it's very, very important religious significance because these dings weighing kind of upwards of several hundred pounds yes. were linked to your family they were linked to your cultural beliefs so it's interesting that they're lifting them, but they're actually really important objects as well, uh, mm -hmm. culturally, which suggests that, you know, this was more than kind of just weightlifting, like it was part of the culture at that time. Yeah. W would you say it would have even been part of a, a ritual or a becoming uh, a significant, uh, I guess, increase in your stature in society or, 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 or mm. spiritual even? I mean, yeah. Well, no, absolutely. And I think that's something uh, to consider because what we find in a lot of the stone lifting cultures is that lifting the heavy object, lifting the heavy stone is a, is a rite of passage. So, Correct. you know, in other stone lifting cultures, you know, there are different stones that you can lift and the heavier you lift, kind of the further you're progressing, yes. uh, like as a man, because it is typically men who are doing mm -hmm. these challenge stones. So it's very likely that ding lifting in ancient China is part of kind of like an upbringing it's part of a, a spiritual uh, practice that's also proving your new society your new position in a society that's brilliant this is great this is great <laughs> oh thank you no, i'm really enjoying talking to you <laughs> me too this is just fantastic um excuse my enthusiasm i just get so, no, <laughs> so it's, 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 <laughs> it's great to talk shop with people who enjoy this stuff <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, that was one of the, the first things I've, I've really come across. And thank you for uh, naming that book because now I'm definitely going to get it and read it. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm no, really it's fascinated. A, it's a wonderful read. Yeah, I'm really fascinated in learning how far back you can really, I mean, we as 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 uh, scientists nowadays can really go back and, and, and find out about this stuff. So I find it very, very, very um, interesting. Even here in Switzerland, there is a very old tradition of, of physical culture, again, of stone lifting um, and even wrestling that goes back to the people of the Alps for millennia. It's interesting as well. Wow. Yeah. I've only just started researching that myself here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, um, that's wonderful. It's, it's such an important aspect of physical culture. Yeah. That is actually very, it's very difficult, as I'm sure you're encountering, to find out what's going on because it's usually mm -hmm. an oral tradition. Mm -hmm. So it's people are talking about it, they're not writing on it. It's something that is part of a community's knowledge, but if you're not part of that community, it can be difficult to break into yeah. it. So it's, a, yeah. but it's such an important aspect of physical culture because really up until maybe 1700 or 1800, this is the primary way that people are training. Yeah, you know, strength training is lifting up odd objects, is lifting up stones, is lifting up cauldrons. They're not lifting barbells or dumbbells, so it really is an integral part of the development of our fitness industry and interest. Mm. It's interesting that you just said that this used to be a community thing, passed on by word, and even passed on by family. Because again, when we go back to martial arts, speaking of China again, mm -hmm. um, martial arts were not necessarily spread out as they are nowadays. They used to be passed on from family to family. Um, very isolated groups would learn a particular style of martial arts, yeah. you know, and, and then you'd have these, uh, I don't know, battles and whatever uh, competitions. And going into that, uh, we've talked about the ding, um, but even from my own experience in, in learning martial arts, I remember that we start off, for example, with light weapons and eventually progress to heavier and heavier weapons. And there's the, the legend of General Guang, who um, used to use a very long spear kind of uh, weapon with, an, with, a, with a very big broadsword at the end, and it's called the Guan Do. And from the legends that I've learned from my masters and their ancestors, okay. um, they used to swing these things, and I've seen the demonstrations. Um, first of all, it's very impressive to see, because there are some masters in China that can, that can handle these uh, guando weapons which are basically solid metal of of several hundred maybe up to they'll say up to about a hundred pounds in, in weight and i find it very uncannily uncannily similar to the old practice of juggling a barbell where they swing it around their bodies it's actually so so similar um that it it tends to let me think that um maybe uh, this kind of juggling of a weight, whether it be a kettlebell or um, or a weapon or a barbell, goes back again to the soldiers and, and basically back to this history of physical culture. Yeah. What, what would you uh, say on that? Again, I think absolutely. I think what's interesting about cultures outside of kind of Europe and America is this kind of swinging um, exercises tend to be part of a spiritual practice. Yeah. So I know even the broadsword, I have a flirting uh, interest in Tai Chi, and I know they do certain exercises where the internal bodily movement is as important as the external movement. Mm -hmm. And with the broadsword swing, which I've seen, it's very similar, as you say, to swinging the barbell, but also swinging uh, the old Indian clubs, you know, the very large, yes. um, heavy clubs. And that's both a physical practice, a physical activity, but also a religious or spiritual activity. Like it's building your internal strength chi that's anti-chi mm -hmm. you know in different martial arts so i think it is interesting the movements are very similar like as you mm -hmm. say swinging the broadsword spring swinging the barbell they look really similar what's interesting is the focus that different societies attach to it mm -hmm. is actually very different so in china and india it, it can also be a religious practice in europe and the united states swinging the barbell is more a show of strength Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a performance, it's entertainment. So it's interesting yeah. that the movements can be the same, but the meanings can be just so vastly different yes. um, between the two. Absolutely. Yeah, um, that, that Guan Do story stuck with me for so long. Um, and it's interesting that, that that's kind of why I relate it to what I see nowadays. For example, I've seen um, 
recently a book from Sigmund Klein um, where he's juggling a barbell literally all around him. <laughs> it's incredible. And I just say that has got to come from a martial practice. It, it has yeah. to um, because these circular motions around your body, um, although they build the, the physique up, the, the joints, the internal strength, or as the a, the Chinese will call it chi, the, the Indians call it prana, um, whatever it is, it's definitely physical, but the movements look so martial that um, at least I'm not surprised that physical culture goes all the way back again to what you said in the beginning, to a military practice with a focus on, on, on training soldiers um, mm. with swinging actions that that again have this uh, very martial application, right? Large strokes, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's quite uh, interesting. If you're interested in learning more about the ancient methods of physical culture, there's plenty of books on my website, especially looking at the Bronze Era methods. These methods go back well over 100 years, some well over 200 years, and that is especially the light dumbbell system. I've got many books written by Eugene Sandow and others, uh, for example, Strength and How to Obtain It, as well as a, a booklet sized um, a book, which is kind of just very simple instructions, kind of like a pocket guide to the light dumbbell system. That's instructions for using Sandow spring grip dumbbells, an excellent little read. And also the science and art of physical development by W.R. Pope, which goes into more specific details for those that are struggling with the light dumbbell system. There's many titles available on my website, www.goldenerabookum.com. Uh, again, if you're interested in learning more about bronze era methods, uh, methods that were used uh, well 100, 200 years ago, please visit the website. You'll find plenty of titles there. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video looking at the ancient history of physical culture in China. I definitely enjoyed my conversation with Professor Connor Heffernan. And it's interesting that through both our research, we, we found very similar things. And that is how it's very obvious that um, first of all, that physical culture has, uh, I guess, uh, its origins deeply rooted both in biology and in the in military um, practices, but also how that slowly began to evolve into other practices such as such as a more specific martial arts, and even later, um, the wielding of heavy odd objects. And of course, this no doubt led to weightlifting. Um, in future videos, I'll be uh, also I guess uh, showing some of the uh, interviews that I had with Professor uh, Connor Heffernan in regards to Indian club swinging. And so we'll be looking at the uh, at physical culture in ancient India, as well as um, I think it's also ancient Persia. And we're also going to be looking at, of course, uh, in other videos, uh, the effects of, uh, of, of the physical culture practices in Rome and Greece uh, and countries like that. It's going to be very fascinating. Uh, yes, this, this video series will continue. It's quite fascinating to explore, uh, I guess, the whole history of um, ancient practices of physical culture. Well, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Leave me your comments and thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my research, please donate via PayPal. Become a patron. Visit my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com for how to print books and courses. And again, um, if you want to get in touch to collaborate, please uh, just use my email. Contact me via email to collaborate or to pass on your bodybuilding relics or literature. That's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code BOOKWORM12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.